Welcome back. Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another episode of Perspectives Podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Liddy Bro Flacco. To my side is Holden Stefan Roy. Say hi, Holden. Hi, Holden. There you go, my <laughs> guy. We are back with another episode. Uh, we are here with episode 71 with a young artist, writer, singer, rapper, actor, uh, Liddy Bro. Um, yes, sir. East Harlem representative, the legacy of Rob De Niro, Rod Gennaro. Yes, sir. Thank you. What's goody? What's goody? What's goody, nephew? You are ready. I don't ever say that. I'm not one yeah. of those uh, older people that calls everybody <laughs> nephew and shit. Like, I'm like, you're not my nephews. I don't know you little motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But you yeah. are actually my nephew. Nephew, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Nothing much, man. So we're going to get the show started the way we usually do. We do our intro. Um, we yeah. give our origin story because this is about your origin story. So we like to share our origin story so that you feel more uh, obliged to, you know, share your origin story with yeah. us. So yeah. um, the way that this show started, right, is uh, in 2020 during pandemic, me and Jess got started on the Liddy Bros Project, right? And me, Jess, and Paulie. And um, we did, you know, I told Jess, you know, because Jess is, you know, cheat code and, you know, he's he knows how to, like, he's like your dad where he, like, knew how to engineer, produce, mm -hmm. rap. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so uh, just being the Chico that he is, I told him to fall the fuck back. And I was like, yo, bro, just be a fucking rapper. Just be an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, leave, the, leave the production to me. I've been picking it. And then when it came to engineering, I was like, yo, leave that to me. I got somebody in mind. And I had a homie, um, the homie Merker Miyagi from Merker Studios up in Montreal, um, mm. who I hit up for it. And Merker, I tell people all the time on this show, he might as well be a New Yorker because he's one of those, like, engineers that he's like, yo, he does not promote all the stuff that he works on. He's like, fam, if I promote one of you motherfuckers, I got to promote all of you motherfuckers. And I'm not promoting everybody that I fucking work with. What the fuck this shit look like? You know what I mean? A free ball? <laughs> so he doesn't ever promote anything like that. So when he promoted the Liddy Bros, he promoted us, like, with, like, the ill, like, yo... I'd never been, you know, partying and doing drugs in New York City. But if I did, I'd like to do it with the Liddy Bros. And he did, like, he posted the link to the Party Instead music video. And Holden saw that and was like, oh, shit. You know, like, this guy never promotes anything. I should probably check this out. So he goes, checks out the fucking video. And he's like, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I'm putting words in Holden's mouth. He did not say that. But I'm going to say that. You know what I mean? Fuck it. Um, and he was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And I was like, of course, it's me. I mean, well, of course, it's the greatest thing you've ever seen. And then uh, I was I went and looked on Holden's channel and he no, he went and did a music. He did an album review on the whole album. And uh, he did like the most thorough album review I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, we should do an interview together. And then. Uh, he was like, yeah, I was thinking about asking you to do an interview. And um, he was uh, just getting started doing interviews, too, besides doing album reviews. Um, and we did an interview, and I felt like I went to fucking therapy. I was like, yo, this was fucking great. Because it was talking about things that, like, talk about my life instead of, like, talking about, like, you know, when the fuck did you, when did you first fall in love with hip-hop? Like, we all watch <laughs> Brown Sugar. Um yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, I was like, yo, we should do a show together. Let me bring some of my friends to the table. And here we are, episode 71, almost two years later, doing this show. And you know, it's, it's almost like two years since we actually first started interacting, like on a real right. thing. Liter literally, <clears throat> yeah, right. Because I dropped... Because I dropped, we dropped Liddy Bros Volume 1 on September 11th of 2020. So yeah. you uh, probably was, around that it was time. in October. I just know it was in October. October. I did the, don't know when exactly. Right. 
right it was we dropped party instead video like a like a month or something like that after the album dropped and that's when you got up on it right right yeah but um oh, yeah so crazy. here we are fucking two years later dope journey so with that being said right um holden has like his set of questions that he loves to ask but i always love to but i love to be like typical new yorker and cut him the fuck off before he even gets started and <laughs> be like why don't you tell people who you are where you're from and tell them where your parents are from copy um what's good i'm roger nero born and raised in spanish harlem um I mean, I've been doing music all my life. My parents, as well as me, they grew up here in Spanish Harlem as well. They met doing music. So um, just that simple fact, music is just, it's instilled in me, you know? This is, it's in my bloodline. Like, it's, it's in me. This is what I love to do. This is my passion. Um, what was your other questions? <laughs> you, where, where, where are you from? Where are your parents from? Yeah, that, that's that's it right there. We all right, we all from right. Spanish Harlem. Grew up here. Spanish parents grew up in Spanish Harlem. Yeah, right, right. And your parents' parents, parents' parents. Um, I think they was here too. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really know. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, work. Yeah, Harlem though. If I'm if I'm mistaken, we all Harlem babies, man. All mm. of them, grandparents, work. parents. Now us. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's generational. That's a yeah, beautiful for thing. Sure. Mm-hmm. That where um people you can you're like you're you're uh it's like I I've come to notice on this show when as we interview some of the homies, um I'm like, yo, like poison pen, like he's got like a generational family in Brooklyn. So mm-hmm. it's like one of those things where I'm like, yo, you your family literally helped build Brooklyn. So like your family yeah. literally helped build East Harlem. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that, that is like a fact. like it's yeah. like it's generational. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like your father was a part, your mother was a part of helping build mm-hmm. East Harlem. Their mm-hmm. parents were a part of helping build East Harlem. Your families were a part of helping a build, build East Harlem. You know what I mean? Fact. Like yep. this the this city is built on the backs of people like Penn, people like you, your families, my mm-hmm. family. You know what I mean? Like we we've helped build this city up without us. Like there is no everything that people love about this city and what they want to like come here and visit and see, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so ho ho, let's get it get it cracking. <laughs> All right. Ho ho. So we, <laughs> so we got the fir- uh, it's a bit of a story of the question and yeah. um it all starts off with my girlfriend. She's washing the dishes one time and she got her phone open. And she's playing that Black Eyed Peas song. The, I got a feeling. Ooh. She's vibing. Yes, she's dancing. You know, doing her thing. I look at her and I go, "When in the fuck did this song become chores music?" Because if you think about this track and you run it back to like 2010-ish times, it's like the middle of the night celebrations or I guess all day long celebration vibes. People was having a great time to this song. All this time passes. The song doesn't change at all because it's a song. But our relationship. Uh, evolves in such a way where now it goes from being the song that was the celebration to the song that we put on when we're doing some boring stuff like working out or some chores or whatever and we're trying to go back to that celebration period inside of our mind Mm. and that got me thinking about like just our relationships and music and the journeys we are how like you know all the the little ones out there everybody be getting sturdy now they don't even know that that's the dishes music washing at their 30s they don't understand that yet and that when we hear it we kind of just move it along it goes pretty much into the dishes playlist right away because it's just the cycle of life and i bring this up because like as Flacco pointed out, a lot of times when it comes down to being an artist, people kind of start the story somewhere a little bit later on in adolescence when they get their identity a little bit. They they first start identifying with this hip hop or they start writing at this point. But if you think about music, you know, it's one of them intangible things that's been around us since we're born. Like there's a good chance when you came out the hospital that there's a song playing in the room. And as you even pointed out, you know, it's pretty integral because your parents met over music. So without music, yeah. you're not even in that hospital in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, it has this big impact like that. 
And I just know that music is highly influential since time because, like, I can remember being, like, a little one, like, five years old up in the apartment of Montreal, and my dad had them gray boxes all over the amp and the preamp and the tape deck and, uh, you know, the radio with the wires going to the little surround sound in the room. He'd be busting his Led Zeppelin tapes and things of that variety during the daytime. But at nighttime, it was a little bit more of that club music straight from the clubs of montreal and all that kind of stuff and my mom she was more on that discos and the musicals and the disney movies and all of that kind of vibe so all of this is going on when i'm growing up as a little one i have no control over the music there's the radio there's the pop there's everything happening so with that being said i was hoping you could bring us back to the youngest ride Janeiro you can remember being and tell us a little bit what it sounded like to be you growing up and then you know just keep in mind that not all of us you know, come from New York and have a have an right. understanding of what it means to grow up in Spanish Harlem and what that even yeah. feels so, like. Um, yeah, so um, when I was little, um, my, my dad was a DJ. He was a producer. He engineered. He he rapped a little himself. Um, my mom, she raps, she sings. And um, my dad did hip hop. So in my house, there was a lot of hip hop. That's what I'm growing up. That's what I'm hearing. And then, you know, walking around the, the streets of Spanish Harlem, you're hearing all types of team, timbales and just Spanish music. And then over here, you're hearing Biggie on this block. Over here, you're hearing Spanish music. Like, you know, so it's just so many different sounds in Spanish Harlem. Um, now, specifically in my household, again, it was just straight hip hop. Um, there's certain points when I was little that really, like, stick out to me because I believe that's what made me who I am today musically. And so besides hip hop, you know, my dad, it was always artists, different rappers, genres of music coming in and out the house that my dad is recording. So yes, he did hip hop production wise, but he was engineering a variety of See, artists. Y- y'all had a studio at home? Yeah, there was a studio in my house. Um, we still we still have his equipment and stuff. Um, right now I do... My music, I'm only able to record my my vocals right now, the producing and all that. I know how to do that too, but it's just a whole whole little story. But I literally record my songs right where I'm talking to you guys from, right on this same laptop. I, this is my mic right here. This is where I'm recording from. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so there's these little points that stick out. And um, when I was little, I had to be about five five years old, six years old. And my parents' friends, I believe it was like their cousin or something. It was one of, you know, one of my mom's friends' side of the family. And he played the guitar. I'm really little. And um, I just start hearing live music. On the guitar. And I'm little. I'm like, whoa, what the hell is that? Like, this is new. Like, I'm hearing all these beats all day, music all day, rappers. It gets quiet. They're recording. But now I'm hearing live instruments in my house. And I was like, just so like intrigued by it when I was little. And I was just, I came out and I just, I remember staring. I was just staring at his fingers, everything he was doing with the guitar. And so I say that because then, you know, just years later, I'm in sixth grade and boom, I had the opportunity to learn how to play the guitar. And I took it to another level within months. And, Mm. you know, I saw you guys were listening to my very first album in honor of my father. It's called De Niro's Legacy. And so, you know, that's where, you know, that comes into play. And I'm playing my own songs and I'm creating my own music the, the best I could. So what was what? Tell me when you think of your childhood, what's one of the biggest songs that you remember your parents playing? Like something that your parents played that you would be like, what? Like, you know, as soon as you hear it from your childhood, before you got to pick the music that was playing in the crib, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what's a song that like instantly takes you back to your childhood? So a song that instantly takes me back to my childhood. Um, It wasn't like a mainstream song or anything like that. You know, it was music that they did. Um, that that's why to this day I still listen to just my stuff. I, I just can't help it. It's like I love my music, you know. So, but they did a song called "All of This Time." Um, my dad made the beat. My mom sang on it, and um, I, all of this time, and 
that just sticks out to me. I don't know. It's just a beautiful song. The, the way it's, it's just so orchestral, like the way they did everything. Like I can't believe my parents did that. And you would think this was done in like some billion dollar studio with a whole production team and a whole writing team. No, this was two people that one legit just made the beat, mix and mastered it, and then recorded my mom's vocals and she's singing on it and writing her own music. And it's just a professional song that like belonged all over the world. Like Word. That song, nah, that's all of this time that I think that, that you, might as soon be, as you said I think childhood that might song, be the first oh. time that we've had a guest on here that they are able to be like, yo, it's a song that nobody ever heard. It's a song that, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not a, you know, like. There's so uh, much in there that's a first, man. Like, how many yeah, people first, have come through and been, people like. People to grow up in the studio in their home with a studio in their home. Like, it was all think, hip hop uh, since less. time. Like, the guy, you get excited hearing a guitar because you're just so used to beats. Like, all mm -hmm. of this is very much not the typical very, path of yeah, the average the human. <laughs> I mean, you're younger than our usual guests. Um, I mean, we recently had a couple guests that are in your age range, um, mm -hmm. but still, nonetheless, like, uh, you're younger than most of our guests. And I think that that might be, like, part of it, too, you know? Like, mm. you are part of the next generation after us. Right that is yeah. being yeah. raised with family in the industry and studios are already at home by the time even you're more born, than that, you know? How are, uh, do you have access to like YouTube and stuff when you're young? When I was little, um, no, I didn't have access to YouTube. It wasn't even, YouTube when I was little wasn't even really like popping or nothing. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I know it, it was already created, but it was just like, you know, one of them, all right, YouTube, I don't care. You know, it wasn't like how it is now. Like, right. So this is right. Just straight that was up. actually, if I'm not mistaken, right. Uh, knowing your age, right. Did you? Did we talk about your age? How old you are? I have no idea. Uh, what his age nah. Is. Yeah, I'm. I'm 20 years old. So 20 years old. So 10 years ago, uh, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, we were. You were eight years old. We were on YouTube pioneering battle rap on youtube you know what i mean mm -hmm. like grind time and like yeah. everything that yeah. me and sarah did and all that shit that's what youtube those were literally the infancy days of youtube you know that's what i mean fact. like youtube yeah. was definitely that's actually not the perfect way to put it was not it was not it was not the you know like it wasn't it was nah, but, it still wasn't like it still wasn't that like oh kids are all growing up saying I want to be a YouTuber. You know, like that wasn't the way when you were eight years old. It took probably like by the time you're in your teens, when yeah. YouTube starts becoming like, oh, young people are like, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to. Yeah, be I was already. Like, I so was already like finishing high school, and that's when it's like YouTube. I want to be a YouTuber. That's but I was I thinking it to more be. from uh, like as of like let's say 2009, 10, right? You can just mm -hmm. listen to anything on YouTube. And that's big different than a lot of our guests also, where it's like you're coming right. from the era of, you know, Stretch and Bobito is how you're finding stuff to like, by the time you're like nine, 10 years old, you know, maybe a little bit older, pretty much everything's there on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. On YouTube. Yeah, 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 true, or, true, true. Or MySpace true. era is already alive at that point, which is another... Nah, Lime, if anything, Lime Lime era might have been dying <clears throat> at that era. But you definitely had the LimeWire yeah. era. Like you come into the LimeWire era. So, like, already music distribution has evolved past, like, the compact disc at this point from your, right. your whole mm -hmm. life. So, you're, like, yeah, basically... By the, time you're, by the time you're a kid, if I'm not mistaken, your dad is already off of tapes. And yeah. only on I was, CDs, Yeah, when you know he was... I mean? When it like, was you know, like, stuff, I was really little and it's crazy i feel like it's crazy that i don't even remember it because i was like <laughs> i was a baby i was literally a toddler like i, right, was, I had to be four right. years old but i remember like if i'm not mistaken we still have some of the um yeah no i know your players in our does. yeah yeah we have it in the closet but i remember i remember seeing them i would put that in to, to listen and do what he got to do and all that right but definitely when i was a kid and i'm already like you know around like seven and up it was already like you know music on demand and you know youtube was already like it wasn't again it wasn't popping but it was all it was accessible to 
anything it, you want to hear. All the music. Yeah. Right. All the music. So, uh, so when you're like getting into music for yourself, you just have access to like all of it at that point. Yeah. Then. Mm-hmm. That, that's why. Yep. Besides, besides the fact that um, my dad definitely he he didn't play. You, you know, you know, Flaco. He did not play. He freaking was like, yo. Come sit with me and watch me mix. Yo, I'm recording. Yo, yeah. come watch me record him. Da, 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 da. But I loved it. So I would go, I'll sit there, watch him. Yo, like you're gonna do this, you're gonna move that, you're gonna do this. So I already yeah. just I already just had his knowledge and stuff. And then, you know, as I get older and I start really realizing, like, oh shit, you can Google everything and anything. <laughs> like you, I, I'm finally getting my phones to myself. I, oh, I hate so me use it. I, I learned how to play the guitar from school. The next day, I was going back playing two different songs. They're like, how? How are you doing that? The YouTube. Like, I was sitting in my room for hours. I was supposed to be asleep, and I'm there playing the guitar. Like, it was just the thing. Like, I had to learn. I had to make sure I I just, you know, hit, a, hit another level of it than, than anybody else was on. That's so different than most. That's that's the kind of stuff where the young people be wildly different in their come up because like, yo, you you pick up guitar in school, go home, bust out the YouTube video. That shit is wild to me. I remember having a book at first, on how to play yeah. bass. I, I needed a book, and then I had to download right, the right. fucking frets, and there whatever with the numbers, <laughs> and then try to learn how to like guess where the bass line. Nah, YouTube's wild, man. That's crazy, and I, I'm 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 em- I'm emphasizing it because I think a lot of people look down on the younger folk, but don't realize that they have the same tools we've had for the last ten years, but they had time that we never had to like use those tools to be up. I mean, they're all growing up with those playing. tools, right? And then right? being up like, all night playing guitar, like we can't be doing that. Really, we got work and things, you know. <laughs> so it's it's like uh, to me, it's always fascinating how by the time you're twenty, you probably clocked more experience points. And, like, all these relevant yep. skills for music, from production, mm-hmm. with, like, a knowledge, being able to just satisfy your curiosity this whole time. And now you're starting. Like, to me, that's a wild thought that I think a lot of people sleep on. So, like, you're kind yeah. of just, you know, emphasizing that. Yeah, and it, I, I, you know, heavy on the, heavy on the, like, yo, father is, like, a, like a respectable, known to in order to get known in New York City as a DJ in the middle of the 90s, uh, going into the 2000s, that like era in New York City, like you had to be prolific and respected to get mm-hmm. known. You know what I'm saying? So his father was known and um, his mother was like known. You know what I'm saying? So there's like you're growing up with like under pedigree. It's like mm-hmm. literally like, you know, the son of big pun, the son of yeah. um, Ghostface, the son of, you know, all, all these rappers. People look at them like, yo, you guys are the next generation because you are, you know, like you grew up in a household full of this, you know, yeah, so it's, just raw it's like talent. There's, there's more that's expected than like the average person, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then some people aren't born for that right and some people like are like you and take to it like like you know fish to water you know what i'm saying yeah. like i think like puff's puff's son you know what i'm saying like i think that's his like youngest son right now king combs the one that's like mm-hmm. like buzzing and doing his thing and like it took for king Com- you know like i'm pretty sure when he named <laughs> justin's restaurant after his first son he was thinking Justin was going to be the star. You know what I mean? Because they're like, and that's the same thing with like, look at, we all watched um, Run DMC, Rev Run show, or like watch a couple of, and like everybody, like, yo, the oldest son is the one that's like, first one to be like, I'm rapping, I'm rapping. And it's like, but you're not going to be the star. It's like, <laughs> Diggy, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Diggy, it's like, it's the next, you were the one. It's got to be also that like, you want that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, like, I agree. Cause there's no, there's no, like, you can, you can only push your kid into a shit like that for so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they have to want it for themselves. I mean, it sounds and, like you was doing it like without permission, staying up all night to play guitar. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I still, I yeah. still do, you know, um, 
as much as my dad taught me when, when you're engineering vocals, especially, there's just so many things that you can still learn after you think you know it all already. So it's like, no, yeah, when, you're there, when, absolutely is. yeah. So when I'm recording myself at night, sometimes I'll be up for hours. I'll have my vocal sounding clean already, sharp. And then I'm like, I want to try this. So now I'm on YouTube. There it goes, Google. And I'm just researching and researching. What what does this equalizer do? What does this compressor do specifically for a vocal? Like, and yeah, just research all day long, really. Like, yeah, but it's a wildly valuable skill set because I mean, now you can just engineer yourself, right? and even if it's not like now, now to get to the quality you may want in a moment, like you could, you know, it's by the time you're like thirty, by the time mm. you're forty. It's like when I think about how many skill points you're going to have in this engineering tree, you yeah. go pretty far with it. Mm. Or just have yeah. the ability to if you so desire. But like that's something I find wild is just how how many young artists I know that are able to do all this. Like just able to. Because a lot of people in my peer group are not able to do very much. They can't even follow the conversation in the studio. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's what we what you were just saying, right? Like I think it's like, he grew he's he's got the privilege of having grown up in with a studio in his home he the amount of experience points that like when we're all growing up you know either at the birth of hip hop or the generation after in the 80s or the generation after in the in the 90s in the early 90s um mm -hmm. we're all growing up essentially with hip hop detached from us not not in our home you know mm -hmm. like our parents weren't the ones playing hip hop, you know, um, it was us listening to it, you know? Yeah. So now we're the first generations growing up with, and so you're all having the benefit of, of having like a studio at home. This is like, like he said, experience points that like you're clocking in before 20, that it's like by the time yeah. you reach 30, you already have the experience of what like a 50 year old engineer in the mm. music industry already has mm. you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah all that so you start playing guitar at like 12 but before that are you actually writing or making your own music or is it just like you're watching um, your parents before that um i wouldn't write my own music um uh my dad had taught me how to play the piano already and you know like i did whatever i just didn't have as much access as i did later on when i played the guitar but I would sit there with the piano for, you know, as, as long as he let me before he had to do with, you know, what he had to do with music. I would sit there as long as I could and just, you know, try and play the most beautiful sounding notes I could. I was around um, eight years old. I learned how to play um, Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Mm. Performed that in school. So I was doing things like that. And then, you know, when my dad realized, I was like, oh, shit, like, I, I feel like it was like hitting him like, oh, all right. He has a, a a knack for this. It was like, yo, make a beat. Let's you know, let's make a beat. And um, I think one of my first beats was um, I learned how to do the Rugrats theme, and this was just by ear, just remembering the Rugrats. Dun, 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 dun. And I just found it on the keyboard, and we just kind of <laughs> remixed it, and just we we took it from there. And um, he. Yo, look, this is how you put the drums on. This is how you make another track. And this is how you do this. And find all the other instruments you want. And I just sat there with what he showed me how to do and put drums to it, put other instruments to it, synths, etc. And yeah, he just really all he ever did with my beats was uh, mix it and master it, make it sound clean and how it's supposed to sound. Right. That's why wow. so you'd be composing beats since you're eight years old. Mm hmm pretty much um before that I, I was five he didn't um i didn't write it myself but he wrote me a little rap you know it's the r y a and you know little kid stuff and i was excited because i couldn't do it you know i never i just didn't know how to you know get the flow and the timing right you know five and i finally got it and that same morning we went and recorded it and you know that song is on soundcloud um, but yeah, that was the That's first incredible. time I guess you could say that I rapped and you know I wrote my own song. But yeah, the first time I wrote my own song was after his passing. 
mm. like fully on my own. I didn't have no help at all. It was just my brain and my hands. That's that's big. Yeah. Yo, uh, Willie's asking, who is your dad? Uh, my dad, his name is Rob De Niro. You can Google him, YouTube him. Um, he was a big time DJ. Um, you know, back in the nineties, um, he was DJing since he was 10 years old. Um, yeah, he was a big time, big time DJ in East Harlem, producer, East Harlem, yep. engineer, rapper, and yeah, he was also a producer for the legendary Team Hami. So, mm. that's big. But yeah, that's Rob De Niro, man. Thank you, Rob. Work. So, um, when you were young, it was it was straight into music. It was never like comic books, cartoons, video games. Um, something of like course, that. yeah, of course. Um, I like my video games. I, I'm a big time Call of Duty head, man. Not been playing that since i was little too um <laughs> cars of course you know i'm a little boy cars I, I love but um other than music another passion i had was with sports i played basketball um, right all my life up until well, my sophomore year junior year of high school then i just wanted to take music to another level you know so i kind of just flipped back and forth between music and basketball music and basketball mm. right so when you already start performing because of school like early early on and then you how do you get into the guitar there was like a program at school you got into so, or so um i was in sixth grade i already had an interest i had already had my first you know the um the first good the first what is it called the first kit guitars and stuff you get you can get um, the first kit ukuleles right little mm. kid joints the little kid joints. little kit joints yeah and, mm-hmm. excuse me and um yeah, so that was my first touch with the guitar, and I was finding out how to, you know, make chords out of it. And I had broke strings, made it, made things work out of two strings and everything. <laughs> um, sixth grade, I was, I don't, I don't even really know. I just know we were in class. Um, my technology teacher, he's a guitarist. He came into the classroom and was like, hey, if you want to learn how to play the guitar, write your name on a piece of paper and put it in this hat. I'm going to pick two students from each class. I put my name in and literally I was the first name he took out out of my whole class. So, you know, for me, that's mm-hmm. just, that was just showing me that, you know, that was meant to happen to me. You know, I was, mm-hmm. I was meant to play the guitar. That's, that's why when I was little, I just got drawn to it when I heard it. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So, so yeah. then you went home, you learned two songs right away to come back. Yeah, Do you just, remember what songs they were? Um, so the first song I learned in class, it was, um, it was um, Wild Things. I forgot by the name of the group. I feel dumb. But you know, dun, 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 Wild Things. Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, we learned that. The two songs, I know it was, a, um, it was an Avril Lavigne song. I don't know if y'all remember Avril Lavigne. Bro, I'm from oh, Canada. Of course I remember Avril Lavigne. <laughs> 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 Not only that, she was she was, was like she popped when I was like twelve and shit. So yeah, I'm like, I was say, that's like all the way holding. I, I just know now because like, I, I know I know like a lot of yo a lot of people don't know Avril Lavigne. So I just so asked. Wow. Holden's Holden's from Canada. And she's Canadian. So bro, I was like twelve yeah, when she right. dropped. I was like my whole high school was the Avril Lavigne era. Avril Lavigne. Mm-hmm. So I don't remember mm-hmm. what song. I can't get it right now. It was that and um. I don't remember that next one. I know it was really simple. It was just a simple song though, but um, with chords that we didn't learn in class. Mm. And so right. I went, I showed, I was like, yo, Mr. Martino, that's my my guitar teacher's name. Yo, look, I learned how to do this. And he's looking at me like, what? <laughs> how? I didn't teach you that. <laughs> and yeah, it just, it just happened. It was just natural. So you start yeah. going through the guitar and that becomes your focus for a while. Yeah, that was that was my focus. Um, literally, that next year is when I started singing. Um, I went, I joined my school choir, so I was in the guitar ensemble and my school choir. Apparently, it was and then Avril Lavigne's "Hold on, on." That's a good sound still. It's mm-hmm. a good sound still. <laughs> Somebody had typed that. Holden, 
Bolden's yeah, like, let me tell now. you something about my white side. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no, Getting off some Avril Lavigne. Yeah, Avril yeah. Lavigne, especially those like early albums, they pretty they pretty fucking hard. <laughs> oh yeah, she she was holding it down, man. But um, yeah, the next year I started singing, and um, I also had my first performance that that same year. I was in seventh grade. You know, it was, it was packed in my school, and um, so that was a bigger performance, and like you know. My my recollections of performances and music, and um, I performed "Can't Help Falling in Love" by Elvis. Mm. So mm. that's dope. Hard. Yeah. Now that's that's for for you to have grown up doing that years <coughs> later. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. that. It's still being like taught or spread years later. You know, yeah. like shit. That's like. Mm, colonized music. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good. That's good. Give you some eclecticness in your in your palate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but really, like, because when you listen to how versatile your album is, you can hear a lot of these different genres and things blending together to make it like a really mm-hmm. cohesive yeah. pop sound, to be honest. It's like a good mm-hmm. pop sound. Yeah, I know y'all was listening to um change. Um everybody wants a change, but don't wanna change themselves. Um, so those fa- that little phase I was in when I learned the guitar, I ended up really getting into alternative rock. So I don't listen to too much outside music. If I do, it's because like it's just genuinely something that's catching my ear and I just like fall in love with it. So I've um I fell in love with this group. It's only two dudes, um, twenty one pilots. Oh my gosh, they're one of the greatest. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So I, I, I know, I know. Had. It's my white they side. Had- <laughs> <laughs> Holden had- was like, Oh my god, they're one of the greatest. Yeah, yeah fucks with twenty one pilots real heavy. They make yeah, really impressive. Hell yeah, <laughs> definitely. Nah, they're good. Definitely. They're good. They, I know that they're a good band because I have a couple of their songs on my shit. You know what yeah, I mean? So like, yeah. yeah. If you yeah. if you like music, then you know twenty one pilots is legit. Facts. So um, I don't know if you um had watched. I think it was BET when they performed Car Radio. I had not heard of them before that. But I just know they had performed Car Radio. And I'm just hearing the different flow, the different delivery. Because I'm used to, you know, the aggressive rap. Like, da, 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 uh, look. So I'm like, I ponder it's something great. My lungs will fill. And I'm like, what? I was like, what is happening? Again, same thing with the guitar. I was just intrigued, yo. I was just so glued into that TV. And then I got stuck. I freaking I went, like everything else, researched them, looked up their music. And now that's when I take the guitar to another level. I start learning power chords and finger picking and because of their songs. And that mm. just made me grow a whole lot down to um falsettos, just my singing voice and, and change. I know you, you if you, you hear that scream, um crazy. Like I, I picked that up from them. So Yeah, I fuck definitely with them yeah, the alternative just kind of ruled over my my um, beginning to like really doing music on my own, and just I feel like that was supposed to happen because you know to this day I still like my music to sound different. I like it to um, you know I, I I like to find something familiar. Like you know I want somebody to hear a beat and it's like, oh, all right, like you know it's a similar vibe to like this one song. But then my actual, my flow or my melody that I put on it is just totally different from what they're probably expecting to hear. And I feel like it's because of that, you know? Just listening to different music and looking mm-hmm. into different things. Yeah, I appreciate that. I feel like that's the one thing we're growing up with the YouTube and shit. You just get exposed to that so simply. Like, um, I saw that performance actually, it was pretty hard. But like just to be able to come across that as a teenager, I feel like that's a blessing and be able to have that kind of like moment. Um mm-hmm. so you're like are you are you like writing songs with your dad at this point as you're going through all this? I had wrote um so on that De Niro's legacy album, excuse me. Um My Love, You're My Love and Changes were the 
only two songs that I did with my dad and me, him and my mom wrote those together. You know, mm. I would kind of have the start to the song and like, All right, this is what I want to talk about in this song. But I didn't know how to put words together yet. You know, I didn't know how to just, you know, it is something that, you know, I, I know usually people like, it's just natural for them. They just naturally know how to just, I right, this, this, this and that. But I, I did learn that from them. And mm. um, so, yeah, those two songs I actually were able to do with my dad. Those were my beats. Um, like I had told you how I would make a beat and he would mix it, master it. And, you know, just mix and master everything else that I created. So those two songs were, that was my production for the most part. He was, I guess you can say, an executive producer in the sense of mixing and mastering it. And, you know, how old were you when you made them? <clears throat> um, Both of those songs, I was 13. 13? Yeah, I was about 13, 14 years old. Bro, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's like way different than right. Like, <clears throat> when well, we were up, good, we good. Were, we were rap. We were just focusing <laughs> on you, rapping bro. over uh, beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't care. We just wanted it to be a beat that we liked. You know, mm. um, it wasn't like you were focused on like fleshing out the beat. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's like a. To graduation, Mans is making you know, singles like a, at 13 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Like, that's Thank like you, a bro. like, I don't know. I, I can't say I've talked to that many people who are willing to even share the music they created at that age, even when they had the privilege of having access to people to make that music. So, mm -hmm. the fact that like your shit be holding up today and you made it at that mm -hmm. age is just yeah. mind blowing. Like, I feel like that in and of itself is, is worthy of flowers because, like, I don't think there's a lot of people that can make that claim, for real. Yeah, there, there, mm -hmm. there isn't. You know, it's definitely a blessing, bro. I appreciate you. Um, so, Matt, so you started that, like, young. Are you, like, doing any kind of performing at that point with this music, like, while you're in school and whatnot? Um, I believe I perform changes in school. Eighth, I know I, I definitely did. It was eighth grade and I had performed it. I forgot what happened in our real world. I know there was it was some mass shooting. There's so so many. I'll be losing like track of when this and this happened. But um I know there was a mass shooting and you know, speaking about you know, changes if you listen to what I'm saying in the song, it's they really what it's called changes. You know, everybody wants to change, but they don't want to change themselves, you know. No, everybody wants to do the same thing. Everybody wants to be like this one that's, you know, in a negative light. And so, you know, it just sent a great message. And my principal, he approved of it. He was like in love with the song. My music teacher was in love with the song. So that was my first time performing an original song um, in, in my school. Yeah, shout out your teacher and them for like. Yeah, shout out Mr. Martino. Them. Shout out Mr. Durant, man. For facts. My guys, I shout still out, I still keep out. in contact with them too. Yeah, you That's you had you had a, a blessing like of like not only having mom and dad at home um, encouraging and pushing you with the music to pursue it, but and then you were blessed to like have <clears throat> teachers at school in a music department that like was also trying to foster this talent within you you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's almost like it's almost like if like if if it was if uh um willy world uh which is um willy scandals i believe you yeah, said it's willy scandals right willy scandals a friend of holden oh, from no, willy. montreal um it keeps on referencing arch manny which is mm -hmm. uh football right like we're talking about like in that reference we're talking about football where like uh, a father is an athlete and a professional athlete the same thing i guess you could say mm -hmm. um like uh well probably not the same thing i was going to mention the ball brothers but like it's not <laughs> like their father was like a pro athlete um mm -hmm. but you know regardless the point is um there's there's other 
players in the NBA that like came from like the lineage, like uh, this kid, Doc Rivers' son. Um, oh, uh, Del, Del Curry. Del Curry. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, like that. That this lineage of like you're being fostered in by somebody who's a pro as well. It's like it, actors as well. You know, like <laughs> people expect. They just expect um, uh, if like. You have Robert De Niro's last name or Al Pacino's last name. It's like, yeah. oh, they're going to be a, a great actor, right? Like Julia Roberts. Um, and uh, I think it's not Julia Roberts because she doesn't have a kid or I don't think it's her daughter. But like there's a young <laughs> Roberts that's in the acting world now. She's her brother, who's also an actor. Um, her her brother's daughter or something like that. Yeah, and so like people just expect, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yo, yeah. high, you, high you, standards. Like, high like yeah, high expectations, high standards. You know, but like, yo, you're living up to it. Like Holden said, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that song, um, stands the test of time. And that was like, what? What are we talking about? Like we're talking about a a, a seven year old song. Yeah, in this day and age, yeah. that's big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the oldest song. How many, how many years is it? Yeah, um, I'm six. 20, so about, yeah, about seven. I think you, you was right on the dot with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, oh, to make a song that will stand the test of time at 13, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're setting your set, like, that's like a good path to start out with. You know, no, I mean, like, most definitely. most most of us rappers from the generation before don't look at our first song as like something to be proud of. Like we're yeah. all kind of like, nah, you can keep that. Like, in the <laughs> ball. like that doesn't, yeah. uh, you know, like. <clears throat> no, nah, but for real, like the the music, like I really like the album. I mean, appreciate. I it. think it's got a story to it. If I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, and then, yeah. It, it, it like feels like really uh, it feels like something that a lot of people have to drop a lot of bad music to figure out how to cohesively put together 11 tracks into like a tale that ends on a somber note like yeah, that so <laughs> i had already had the idea for the album on like um i i think i kind of you know wanted to fall into this lane going down the tracks which is where, um, you know, I, I had my mom do the intro, especially just for the meaning of, you know, that that was her husband, you know, that I did it in the honor of him. So I just felt it was it was meant for her to do the intro to that album. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what she's saying in it is basically, which is what I wanted the album to be about, you know, um, not just about my dad and all of that, but just about the pain of losing him, of losing family, of of heartbreak, you know? So I have the love songs in there, which is, you know, talking about, you know, you don't, you, you can lose a loved one, but you can also lose your love, you know? Which is where, you know, little things like um, my song Useless, I'm talking about how it's nothing personal. It's not nothing that I, I dealt with um, a lot of the songs would be um, stories that I just kind of build the concepts on and useless is, you know, just a song about like, yo, you're my partner. I'm doing everything I could for you and you're making me feel useless. You're making me feel like shit, you know? So there's people that really go through these things and that's really what I wanted the album to do. I wanted it to reach out to these people and say, Hey, you're going through something and, as bad as it is, it's okay. Like, you're going to get through it, you know? And um, you were how old? How old were you? Uh, so time? for this album, I was 15. I was so in the about five studio. years ago. Yeah, I was in the studio with you. I was, was I still 15 or 16? Um, I'm I'm bad with dates. <laughs> yeah, <time>. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same head, like. Um, I, I was around there, 15, 16, yeah. where I, I finally had the album completed. And um, 
yeah, I just wanted it to reach out to to people to let them know, like, you know, you're not in this alone. You know, I did. I went through a a, a, a tremendous loss that really we got a co-sign in the, in the chat from not saying it was definitely 15. So definitely 15. Copy. Five years ago, 15. Shout out so, to you, yeah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Shout out Mama Love, man. I love you, Ma. Yeah. Um, it's just great because she's been like fact checking the whole way through this. And, yeah. Like, that has <laughs> no, to be his it's mom. Super, it's super it has cool. to be his it's, mom. It's, it's, <laughs> the, yeah. it's the cool. It's the coolest fucking. She's not right. She's like she's not a momager, but she's like essentially yeah. the the unofficial momager. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like For she's sure. always gonna be. She's always gonna be like you know. Uh, 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 in your ear and giving mm-hmm. you great advice. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Listen to her at For all sure. times. <laughs> so she's For in sure. the comment section checking everything. Checking everything. Right, 15. Yeah, she should. 15. 15 years old when you put out that album. Oh, yeah, 15. There you go. That's wild. That's crazy. That Like, the things that I'm saying, I wanted to highlight his age because, like, we're talking about, like, a 15-year-old telling, like, talking about wanting to convey um to people uh about loss and like te- teaching people about grieving and grieving with and so that's just really profound like most people that's like a, a you, you're you, that's some grown man shit at 15 you know what i'm saying Fact. like most mm-hmm. people at 15 are like not you know dealing with any of that you know mm-hmm. um Bro, nobody so, at 15 is dropping polished albums like that. <laughs> like, right. I know there are 15-year-olds uh, that have done it, but not a lot of them. Not a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, the truth is that even, like, the ones that, like, like it's a way different, right? Like, we're talking about... If Bro, we're I thought talking you were, about... like, 18 when I heard that shit. No problem. You know, like... <laughs> no, 18, that's, 19, oh, no, like, definitely. Oh, definitely. Like, it's, it's, it's... There's nothing about the music that says to you, oh, Red Flag, we're listening to, like, Kid, you know, Criss Cross, like, Lil Bow Wow, or nothing. Lil Romeo. Like, nothing about it has that type... And this is what I was trying to get to, is, like, right? Like, those artists, right, that they, like, got to put out polished albums uh, uh, at that uh, earlier than that age, or at that age, we're still not putting out <coughs> content right that sounded like that. They were putting mm-hmm. out again right music that sounded like a thirteen-year-old making a polished professional album because he was signed, you know, in the music industry. You know, um, mm-hmm. so it's not the same thing. Like you're, you're. Like at not at the advantage of being in the music industry, and then you're producing at a level of the adult music industry. Mm. You know, like that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty. Um, pretty uh, fucking pretty. top top tier shit, there, buddy. <laughs> pretty top tier shit, uh, right there. Thank you, you know? thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. I would I would say. Um, so you, man. how do you actually go about dropping that project? Like, tell us um, a bit more about like how you went about making it. <clears throat> um, it, it's kind of a blur because especially of the time that it was in, um, how did I go about making it? It was just happening. It was legit just coming about. Um, I'm blessed to have. My my uncle right here, and I mean, helped me through the journeys I've been on so far with with this music stuff. Um, he's he's definitely hooked me up with with a lot of different producers, engineers, etc. Um, so definitely, I do know for sure that I went to him and we spoke about music, and I I told him my idea, the concept that I had, and he was like, "All right, well, that I." I'm going to set it for this day. You come to the studio, we finish it. Um, that same session, I legit finished the rest of the album. It was like eight tracks. And I was able to finish it in a good four hours, was it? Right. Was it four hours? Um, <laughs> was like four hours. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I was only out on the, on the reading the conversation happening in the chat. Um, yeah, it was in four hours. I 
I fell asleep. I went into a champagne induced coma um, for <laughs> about two and a half hours. I was awake for an hour, uh, about close to an hour. Like he, like inside of uh, 30 to 45 minutes that it took me to like fall asleep um, from all the champagne. Uh, um, you were like one song in and starting on the second song. And then when I woke up, you had like an EP essentially recorded. Like mm. it was like six songs, I believe, or yeah, seven songs. I just remember six or seven songs. Yeah, it was around there. And then I know you was definitely up for the last song, which I think was useless. And um, yeah, it was it was done. And then it was just really me. I listened to all the songs that I had um, done already. I already knew that I wanted. You know, it was only. Right again, that you know, the two songs I did with my dad were on that album, and um, yeah, I was just like, you know, I think we should start with this. You know, it's a little more up tempo. Um, you know, Wave was on there, Changes is more up tempo. Um, and I just wanted it to slowly like slow down and like, all right, let's get you know, let's get real real quick. And you know, in my head, it was like, yo, let's have. Uh, um, I guess you could say like a group session, a group therapy session. And, you know, let's talk about these very real circumstances that people go through, whether it's a uh, loss in their family or a uh, heartbreak. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Did you, you mute know? yourself for that? Because I feel yeah. like I still heard it. Yeah, I still heard it. Yeah. I tried to mute myself, bro. I, I don't know how I used to hurt. Tried to mute yourself. Oh, those shit. are some powerful sneezes, buddy. Yeah, I'm glad you you tried at least. <laughs> Word. But yeah, so it was nah. just about um con constructing it. You know, how should this album be built so that you know you get the most heartfelt music? And, yeah. Right. Mm. The fact that 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 is your approach is like you know what I'm saying. Um, just uh, yeah, that's like like that's what like, where literally where like a lot of the studio people come in and help people make the album an album and shit because like yeah. that's the art in and of itself, the curation of a bunch of songs in the right order. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, like, to me, like, the main difference between a mixtape or whatever. We're just throwing a bunch of songs on mm -hmm. and, like, an album where yeah, the album. goal is to, 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 at least to me, an album should be telling a story or moving you emotionally from, like, point A to point B in some way or mm -hmm. another. And otherwise, it's just a collection of songs, you know? Like, they're not the same thing. Right. I agree. Yeah. So it's, like, it's really cool. Because, again, for me, it's, like, 15 fuck me right like that's that's a wild I, nobody at 15 was doing that shit where you know where i'm at you know nobody so it's like pretty I mean, crazy special special these are all special circumstances right like we're talking about being born mm. um into uh uh a musical family being born into <laughs> her her heritage in spanish harlem to a mother a, a mother who's like vocally talented like on some like legit uh um could have content could have contended with with everybody of the era at the time you know like she she would have been competition essentially for like monifa and like uh mary j blige you know what i'm saying like yeah. um uh and then like a father who's djing in spanish harlem and getting known um like that you know and like growing up with a studio in your home from youth um picking up a guitar and like learning songs on your own from young you know um mm -hmm. these are all special circumstances you know uh having losses at an early point in your life that like give you a perspective that like takes other people years maybe sometimes a lifetime to get and gain, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and then being able yeah. to be focused enough and educated enough and talented naturally enough to focus because up and put all of day, that into the music. 
a lot mm -hmm. of people can get the circumstances but not deliver the product that's dope. Mm -hmm. But you said you're on a whole new wave or something. Yeah, and the new wave. <laughs> Um, so, so what happens after it comes out? How do you go about releasing it? Like, is, do you have like a whole rollout or do you just drop it? Um, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think there was like a, I, I want to drop it specifically on this day for this reason. Um, I used TuneCore to drop it. So it did take some time before it released. So I kind of measured that timing out, which, um, took about a month. So, yeah, really, you know, it wasn't too deep for the, you know, the distribution aspect on the album. Just, you know, made sure uh, I got it promoted, you know, through myself, my family, um, you know, every, everyone that supports and, you know, genuinely love, loves me and all that. Yeah. Just so, push, push, push. So what happens after it comes out? Like, what, what's the next phase for you? Um, right now I'm just kind of, um, focusing on, on Minecraft and. Nah, we went, well, let's go back to uh, right after like you're, that you're like album 15. Oh, right. oh, okay. Okay. Right. Right. right, right. right after, so, that after, after that. Yeah. Right. Yep. So I, after so, that, it was, um, it was definitely a relief. I, I do remember just feeling like, uh, this sort of weight just kind of lifted off of me. Cause you know, obviously I was going through my 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 things still and um yeah I, I do know after that it was just I, I got back into um a certain headspace that you know um thank you know thankfully I was able to to stay strong and and get through um basketball after that is what helped keep me going um I did write a song about my dad that was the very last song on the album. And um that took a lot. It, it did take a lot. Um but yeah, after that album, basketball did keep me going for like that next year because I fell into a really deep depression. Um I did like try to keep myself motivated as much as much as I could, but yeah, just I couldn't no more because it didn't feel right. Um, after doing that, it was just like, damn, where's my dad? You know, this is I'm supposed to be doing this with him, so it it hurt. It definitely hurt. Basketball kept me going, and then you know when I I, I don't want to say I got past it because um you know to this day I I still not past it. I don't think I ever can get past it, but I did learn how to deal with it. I learned how to move on with with this um this pain and you know turning it into my craft you know and motivating me keeping me inspired to do more and um just pushing me so that's that's what happened for like that next year i didn't do um another song until i was almost 17 then that's when i dropped my song my single bang mm. and um and yeah, then you know after that now, now I kind of got into a groove again. Like okay, I I can do this without him, and you know I can work to at least get to his level and then surpass that. So right. yeah, that's really what went on right after that album. I just you know promoted it, kept pushing it for a little while, and I didn't I didn't really touch music again for for a good like year and some change probably. Did you, what were you doing? It was it just basketball in that part? Yeah, it was it was right. legit just basketball. I was a, a workout fiend. Um, you know, you can ask my mom in the chat. You know, I was coming home from basketball practice after like five hours of workouts, coming home and still working out before I showered. And like I don't know, I was just in a a routine of work, 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 and just push and you know let certain anger out and certain emotions out right i think I something mean, about um like talk you know uh knowing your dad being a uh, brother to him like up and like literally doing the same thing like i threw myself into work 
Like I was just like, yo, mm -hmm. I just took every job that I could and I just didn't fucking hang out. I didn't do it. Like, I think it's something about, right? Like the, like the Nero's like uh, something about his energy. That's even like, all right, like even if you guys are going to mourn, like you still have to work. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I you can, can I mourn, him. Uh, you can mourn, but you still have to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I, I mean. I was, like, I was hearing him. I do remember, uh, like, I was hearing him in those times, like, nigga, stop crying, yo. At least, yo, go play ball then. Mm -hmm. Nigga, just stop, <clears throat> yo. Just do this. Da da. Like, so it was just right. like, oh, like, leave me alone. <laughs> like, but right, right. I gotta, I gotta tee up. You know, I gotta, I gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. And it, um, it was. It was definite. So, like, I think that that's like the energy of him keeping on us, you know. Right. Um, and like, you know, his his you know his guidance. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, still, like, yo, go through it, mourn, but um, keep working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a powerful person. He he, yeah. you know, not just because he's my dad, but he he actually was, you know. Um, nah, he was he was a super powerful person. Yeah, I could, nah. spe I could speak I could speak to it as his brother, you know, and like say like how like he he was a a a, a unifying force all by himself. Like when Team Hami wasn't necessarily um focusing on putting together a project he was pushing all the members individually and as mm -hmm. a group to like record and like get working on an album he was like a driving force in team hami before like even the leadership in team hami was the driving force behind mm -hmm. like like he was driving the team and he was driving uh, he was driving like New York City. I remember like him hitting me up to go to the studio, uh, like after like right around when PH passed <laughs> away, and like right. I felt like it was almost like he was like a like a like a godsend, like coming to like unify all of us in a time of grief when we first lost PH and shit, and um, and then you know uh, he's just always but even before then right like there i know people that know him from djing in harlem back in the day you know what right. i'm saying like he wasn't like oh like it's not like we're talking about like like i like know people that like dj and i right like in high school in junior high in high school i made like fake pause tapes I had like a fake DJ name, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but like nobody knew me. Nobody knew me as a DJ. Nobody, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't being, you know, uh, uh, spoken about. Like right. Rob was always being spoken about. And um, he always had like a presence everywhere that he went. Um, he had like, a, he was, not only was he a tall big man right but like his personality was like bigger so mm -hmm. like it he seemed even taller than he was so like mm -hmm. he he i'm not sure like how tall he was exactly he might have been like <laughs> six four or something six, like. three six six three. Okay, six, three he was like six three but like he like felt taller like he felt like yeah. Shaq. you know what i'm saying like yeah. like he felt like a presence of a person, but it wasn't like just because of his energy. height. It was his, his energy as a person, and like like the the energy that he would put out and his personality and how he was, and he was very giving and very kind. Um, so it was like I don't want to say gentle giant because like it, like it wasn't like he was really like gentle like that either. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it but it like. To those who he loved, he they we could consider him a gentle giant. Yeah. But like nobody, like no, no, like nobody that sees him is just like gonna be like, oh yeah, that guy's probably a gentle giant. Like, nah, that's not like the um, energy that he was giving off at all. 
you know, yeah. but um, like he was a presence and a and a powerful person. So like, right. um, yeah. So like, you it ain't even just like, oh, you're his son, and you're gonna have nothing but good things to say about your dad. Nah, it's like you know, mm, yeah, that's, it, that's it was, like it was the very truth. real. Um, what made me really realize that, um, as much as usually these things are like very traumatic for people but his his service um for his passing yo bro i just remember sitting there like wow i didn't know this many people could be here for somebody yo like when i tell you that funeral home inside was extremely packed you would have thought he was just throwing a party in there like you would have just thought there was like a concert because it was there was so many people standing on a line that was wrapping right. around the block, right, right, and wrapping around the block. It was crazy, and, and, like you know, there's no like, uh, and they're, they're there, like, you know, they were there for him, you know, for for yeah. the Dinero family. Um, so, and it, we're talking about like a lot of people, like we're talking about everything from right, like your family's reach in. Uh, Spanish Harlem to everything that your father reached um, beyond that to like everybody who respected him, who knew him and of him, you know, like mm -hmm. there, Immortal Technique was there, you know, like, yeah. there, like there, there, there was people like Shout out to my people guy, coming, mm. coming to all sorts of, all of Team Hami was there. Um, and you know, uh, yeah, down down to very, down to um my my school, my my whole school. Yeah, was there, right, so, right. You exactly. know, just just in the the pers the perspective of him, you know, as as a father, like he was very involved. You know, like my basketball team loved him. Like you know, like they were crying. They I wasn't in school for like two months. You know, and. They were doing right. something in my school for him every single day. Like, they weren't in class. They were, like, actually, like, they really felt that, you know? And at that point, I was I was in my freshman year of high school. So it's like, that. that's just how strong his energy was where, you know, he touched he touched souls. He touched hearts, you know? He was just a great guy and um, very loving, you know? That's yeah. big. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very, very big, very, uh, 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 a given person, a great person, you know, um, like I, I, I'm sure like, uh, me, same as like a lot of people like try to like, just do right by, you know, his memory and, um, Sorry. honor him, you know, or. Yeah. Um, and so after that, we're talking about like now, essentially. So like, what was it that like when you came out of the came out of the hustle of just you know um, doing sports and and working out and all that? When you came out of that, what did you come out of that with? Um, like, ready to do musically? Like, where was where were you at at that point? Um... At that point, um, yeah, it started with with Bing, and literally right after that, it was just like I just I still love basketball. That's still my sport, but I just didn't love it. Yeah. I wasn't in love with it no more. You know, it was right. just like, nah, it's music. It's been music the whole time. Like the yeah. whole time, it's been music. Um, and that's just what I ended up. I just just happened. There was no real like, okay, on this day, I'm about to just start music again and drop basketball. It was just like, nah, I'm good. Yo, mm. like coach, da da da, with all due respect, you know, I wanna quit the team, da da da. I just wanna I wanna pursue music. This is this is my passion, this is what I love to do, this is what I love to do. And boom, I come out with Bang, which soon um Jada Kiss hears. And he was, he reaches out to me and, you know, puts it on, on his mixtape. Right. So, 
you know, those were little signs to me, you know, it wasn't, I didn't look at those things like, oh yes, Jada kiss hit me up, I'm making it. It was just signs of, yo bro, you're on the right path. Just keep going. Like just, this is, this was your move. This was the right move to make. And that was, was the confirmation. what year was that? This is, this happens in 2019. 2019. Yeah. About right. 2019, Jada 2019. Kiss reaches out and boom. Right. And then pandemic happens. 2020. Yeah, pandemic. Stops literally, at, this this ne- that next year, well, months later. Right. Months later. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's so, where I, I really, really grew. Uh, I feel as much as I, you know, I took that time to play games. I was done with high school. No, I wasn't even done with high school. I, w- I was going to be done that year. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I, you I, were 18. I still took that time. Yeah, I still took that you were time. 18, I keep, right. I guess some of these timelines messed up sometimes. But, um, yeah, during the pandemic, is I, I took I took that time as well as to play games to, um, you know, start really grinding on that craft of wordplay, flow, melodies, all of that. Mm. Oh, man. and then so yeah uh, over the pandemic are you are you still making songs are you still working on something or so at at that point um there was a whole situation with the studio i wasn't able to record at home myself anymore um but i did already you know dutch had already gave me the opportunity to you know reach out so i can go to the studio you know you just needed some time because of the pandemic and stuff, but um, yeah, because all the studios were closed. Yeah, was, everything was pretty much. I had closed. him set up with some hours at the same studio that he recorded the album. that pro- that album with, um, on my hours, right? Like then I set him up with his own hours and whenever he wanted to go to the studio, but that studio and all studios in New York City and New Jersey just closed like nothing was open during pandemic you know we 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 were recording volume one on iphone on sure mic connected to an iphone (laughs) so Mm -hmm. like and band lab and that's yeah um, and and then like I'm, i'm telling you like i'm not dragging it when i say like uh my Liddy bro, my fellow Liddy bro right here, literally, yo, he just introduced me to, to everything that I do now because I had no way to record. And at this point, ending the pandemic especially, I already had, like, 10 tracks. I was already, like, done. I'm like, yo, like, I have so many he would songs. Send me, he would send me the songs and like, would record on his. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, he showed me Band Lab. I ended up going to his house, and he's like, yo, you're going to put this on? It's a little delayed, so we got to move in and stuff. But we just laying your vocals down. We'll do that ourselves. Da, da, da. I'm like, Band Lab. I'm like, boom, he's telling me about it. Like, yeah, like, we can collab, and we can do this on here. You can record your, record your vocals, and da, da, da. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit, all right. I'm going to download it. Came home with it, <laughs> researched it. I didn't even tell him. I just started doing the songs, and I was like, "Yo, da yo, unk, look what I did with Band Lab. Sent it to him. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Dude, wait, what studio he, you sent it to?" Friends. And I'm like, "Yo, he had friends and <laughs> followers on Band Lab, yeah. which I I wasn't using Band Lab. Like Band Lab is, you know, it's a it's a app, a studio app, like kind of like Pro Tools, but on your phone." But, like, you can also, it's also, like, a social media app. Right. So, like, you can follow other <laughs> artists. Instagram for you music. Can, yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. So, like, um, so, like, you can, you can do social on it. I just didn't use it for social. I was literally just using it for, like, the studio purpose because the studios were um, yeah. not working and we had a situation you were taking a very rigid approach of this is my need i'm going to just accomplish my goal whereas rye took a very malleable approach what is this tool and how can i use it yes (laughs) yes yeah he like fucking i was like what the fuck he was using like 
He's like, yo, collabing with people. What on um, that. what studio did you send this to? You sent this to to my guy. You didn't. You didn't tell me. I'm like, no, I did it through Band Lab. You got to know. You got this compressors and everything that I know how to use on yeah. it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So now I'm just growing. I'm still growing with that, and I'm still making my songs sound better. So did y'all? Did y'all? Because I know you were on the YouTube, but did you guys um put on Henny and Coke and Stranger Things? Yeah. Right. Right. So those songs were done through band lab that was my those were my ah. mixes and masters that was literally and at that point though i didn't have the microphone so you know this, the music only sounds better now um i did that through the apple headphones the you know the wired headphones so That's i just tired. had the mic right here and i'm just like i love all type of bitches that sunny and coke mixed it their ad libs doubles whatever i needed to do on there and um same for stranger things and then um I'm like, nah, I need to, I, it sounds clean. People are already telling me, yo, you got to put me on to your, your engineer, your, your studio, where you go. I'm like, nigga, I'm, I'm laying down doing these songs. I ain't going to lie. I'm literally laying down, rapping these joints. <laughs> and so shouts now. To, shouts to, by the way, shouts to, I'm, I'm happy you said that. Let, I'm a quick plug. Um, big pun. Used to lay down in the studio. Marvin Gaye would lay down sideways, <laughs> laying like this, and record his songs. I'm a big advocate for sitting down and recording your vocals. Like, a lot of people think that, like, it's, like, taboo. And I'm like, no. Like, when you know how to use your your diaphragm and your, like, lung yeah, capacity fact. correctly, you know how to... <laughs> It won't affect your vocals in any way. If anything, sometimes no, no, no. it's more com it's more comfortable for your vocals. Um, yeah, it, it, it's so really, like, for me. It depends on my song. If I'm doing something more up tempo, I do mm -hmm. want to stand up because it's like I don't right. know. I, when I, if you watch me record, I close my eyes and all that, and it's like I just like it's like I'm imagining I I got my crowd here, like so let's go. Da, 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 and I'm rapping, doing whatever I got to do. But if it's a more right. mellow Holden, song. Holden can actually attest to. Uh, watching yeah yeah work. that's right yeah that's i did right. see that <clears throat> yeah i can't um, attest to that <laughs> <laughs> witness bon 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 can too is in the <laughs> yeah. usually is in the chat um she would she's uh she just finished sending me like a screenshot there of, she is um there <laughs> she goes um she just finished sending me a screenshot of like uh, a thousand plays for Mommy Ben Aki on Spotify through oh, her shit. account, like, like, or a Yo, hundred. I, I don't know that. what the number is, what the exact yeah, number is, but like, it's, it's one of those. It's one of those like where like she feels an attachment to the song because she was in the studio watching it be created, so she, you know, has an attachment to this song now. You know, besides it being a good song. 1057, man. 1057. She will sit there and say, she'll just start singing it. Just like, Mommy Van Aki, come and talk to me. Mommy Van Aki, come and talk to me, yo. That's a dope she song. She, right kept running, she kept running it up because she got to see you guys. She got to see us guys make magic. Oh, shit. Fair. Oh, for knocking sure. stuff over, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that was yeah. that was a cool moment, and he's fast. He came in, Lord. boom, boom, just banged it out ridiculously quick. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was cool watching him work on shit in the car on the way over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I totally, did. I totally wrote the didn't. Second totally book. didn't because he, uh. no, you wrote you wrote my verse and the second mm. and the second hook, and and so I didn't ever practice. Yeah. The the I didn't ever get to practice. I didn't. You had sent me the audio to the way it should sound mm -hmm. two days or three days before. Yeah, but I was already caught up with either I Holden was being getting into very distracting. I think you were you were yeah you were Holden was getting into town and I was showing Holden the town. So I didn't yeah, really I was, have any time. Yeah, no, I, was, I do remember I was, we was both uh, really sit, busy. So like I was. I, I, yeah, we were both really busy. Yeah, it was and that so whole and week. so and so um I didn't really get time to sit with the verse that you wrote for me like that. So yeah. we I had to flesh out mine. So like where where you went in and knocked out your shit, same as like those songs that we talked mm. about. 
during my session, like we, you also knocked this out fast. I, on the other hand, was in there for a minute because I had to flesh out the whole <laughs> yeah. like flow to it and the vibe to it, um, which I didn't have like in my head already. You know, like it was just words, you know, uh, um, on on text. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like before that, like mm-hmm. you need, you need, I need, I need. We all need like artists as artists. Even when you give, right, like when you're writing for main, like you writing for Rihanna, you're writing for Beyonce, you're not writing for them, technically speaking. Like you're going in there and you're laying down a reference song. And mm-hmm. like if they like it, like then they go and memorize that song, you know, and mm-hmm. they might ask for the words, but they might not. And they just might memorize the song and then do their rendition of it you know what i'm saying yeah um yeah. so like that's the way it just works you know what i'm saying like it's, it's mm-hmm. way better that way and yeah i definitely was not what i was in there for a minute i was in that Dude. booth for a second sweating i was like oh man Hello. look at this look in delhi's show so fucking <laughs> brown baby we about to go ocho go ocho mm-hmm. right and so that was we're talking about um, 2021, um, right? Or two? Yeah, oh, shit, yeah. That was last that, year. <clears throat> I know that happened in November last year. Yeah. Yes. Damn, yo, that feels like it was like last week or at least a few. Last year. Last that was last year. year. Almost a whole last year ago. Yeah, almost bro, a whole last crazy. year ago. And so now <laughs> this year, you've been. Um, what are we? What? 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 What's been going on with you with music? Um, lately I've just been um, yeah, working on singles. Um, I do have an EP that I I have to re-record everything on it and stuff because I'm just I'm super uh, meticulous. Been my favorite word lately, so I'm I'm super meticulous with my music and um. Mm-hmm. I do. I, I need like it to that. sound. Good work. Yeah, it's a beautiful word. I love that's some T. Some T. I uh, uh, shit, though. By the way, ma- ma- <laughs> that sounds you know that that like what? That sounds like that. I'm very meticulous about my gentleman <laughs> legal vocabulary. <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, I'm mad. I'm just super. Like it needs to sound a certain way. So I gotta go back. Just run, run through every track real quick and fix it up. So everything sound the same. Everything's leveled out. Cause um, yeah, it's you know for the EP, it gotta be smooth. It gotta just be one of those type of things, and just right, yeah. So yeah, that's that's definitely um. Anyone watching, stay yeah. tuned on my IG at Roger Nero for, uh, when I start promoting that um that EP is coming soon. So. And how did you end up making a, a parody ghost video thing? Hey man, I'm just I, I joke all day long. Um, I'm actually a little more serious than I usually am today. I'm a little under the weather, but, um, I joke all day. I just, I don't know. I was with my cousin, um, me and him were already doing, I don't know how this happened, but we just made Wi-Fi videos. He he needed the Wi-Fi password. So I freaking got like some stupid angle where like, I'm like putting the camera from the bottom of his face up and it just looks like his head is like a cone. And he's like, yo, bro, you need you you need the Wi-Fi. But it's like if he's teleporting in my house. And so we already had that idea. And we was already just, we did a couple videos on that. Um, a couple videos for my page, a couple for his. And then I was like, yo, I'm not going to lie. I want to act, though. I want to I wanna do something, like, you know, myself. And I love parodies. Um, I don't know if y'all know the YouTuber Dashy. No? Uh, no. <clears throat> no. Nah? I don't. But yo, if y'all watch Dashy, y'all will fall in love with his videos because he's just goofy and loud. But he did a lot of parodies on a lot, like just different things. Like it don't even matter what it was—a Nike parody, a cup parody, a microphone parody. It just made no sense. So I was like, yo, I want to do a ghost, a ghost hunter parody, ghost adventure parody, and I just—I don't know. I was like, let me put something stupid on. When I got my little furry robe, put a bucket hat. Oh, on. I've seen I've seen his skits before. Yeah, he's mm. trending right now on TikTok too. 
he 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 be doing freestyles and when he plays games. But yeah, I don't know. The ghost parody it just came up. We was like, yo, let's do it. Let's do another um little TikTok video. TikTok right there too had just um boosted its time limit, so it just went from like sixty seconds to three minutes. Mm. I was like, yo, that's <laughs> perfect. Let's do it. Here we go. We got a video. And um yeah, it just came out how it did. I had to be looking at it like I don't know. I don't know what I would there was no plan on like what to say. It was just completely improv. I just knew we gotta start because this is what they do in the show. They kinda introduce Animal. Here we are <laughs> and walking into the most haunted place and wherever we are. The stupid <laughs> voice and everything. Fun. Yeah. So it just happened. I was just like, yo, what the EV meter? What, what, what was EV, it called? The uh, EVP. Uh, EVP meter. <laughs> Ele- electronic voice phenomenon. <laughs> just like, bro. They always have some gadgets that's yeah. like, what? <laughs> the EMF detectors and EVP you know recorders. I mean? <laughs> like, oh, what? Yeah, it was just, it was just and a it whole beeps. improv. Yeah, so for that part where I was like, um, the REM pod device, the REM pod device is literally like, let's say this is it just here. Supposedly, you know, the ghost got to come touch it or be really close to it for it to beep and go off. Mm-hmm. And so I use my mom's phone because she has this ringtone for, for just like us, me, and my, my sisters. And mm-hmm. it's like, um, hmm, a voice message, a voice a text message from your best friend. Herm. Okay. And I was like, yo, that would be so <laughs> stupid to hear that and I get scared. So I was just like, yo, put it down. I was like, we're going to wait and see. I did my little stupid squat. I'm looking. Herm. A text message. Yo, we out, we out, we out. And it was, you know. <laughs> That's amazing. No, it was really enjoyable. Really well done. Really well Thank done. You. It was hilarious. I appreciate it was you, funny. Appreciate so the my wife, the Molly, she was like, she was dying because <laughs> she loves those shows. Yeah. So she, you know what I mean? Like for her, it hits all the way home. Like for me, I'm like a secondhand viewer. You know what I mean? Like I'm half yeah. paying attention when she's watching that, you know? <laughs> oh, she watches those shows on her own time for the most part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, I'm not, I will only hear like when I'm like maybe like, Oh, I'm coming and no, going. Sometimes, like, you walk in and it catches your eye for like five yeah, yeah. minutes. You're like, I'm gonna try five. it. You sit down, five yeah, minutes passes. Like, a... like, nah, I'm out. This is the yeah. same as every other episode. <laughs> yeah, every episode, same thing. All the same shows, thing. the same, same thing. It's like one in every season that's like, oh, shoot. And they hear like a growl on top of their head of some weird shit. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> 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 like, they walk into a room. Did you hear that? What? Like, bro, okay, bro. <laughs> but that's why it was just it was just funny. I was really trying to mimic that with um we're gonna we're gonna wait and hear a voice and my mom is sitting there and she's like I thought she was saying run. She was actually saying my name. But she's just there like hi. And I'm like, yo, you heard that? And she's like, run, bitch. <laughs> I was like, what you we out, we out. <laughs> Uh, so, so is acting a thing that you're like trying to do with uh, acting is just fun to me so it's just like you know I get the opportunities I'm gonna definitely take it even if that means it's for something like you know those little skits it's just fun it's, it's mad fun to do to you know put your mind in like another setting even if you're somewhere like at home where's where I did the mm. ghost parody um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just to have uh, some imagination, you know. For me, it's like when you're a kid, you think there's freaking, you think Spider Man is actually out in the world and Superman flying around saving people. <laughs> but like, you grow up and it's like, oh, they they not real or Santa Claus, and all, all you know those things. Your your imagination is wild. So it's like mm. acting definitely brings me back to being a kid and imagining something's happening that's not happening at all and. It's amazing. It's dope. Yeah, I'm glad you get that. So, like, um, so you're currently working on that EP. Uh, is there anything yeah. else that you have going on? Uh, as of right now, no. Just 
singles and every day I'm working on something new, so. Fair. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much, that's pretty much all. just working on, on that EP and working on other, other side missions. Mm. Or side getting all them side mission brand. points. So like we point. need that we need the XP. <laughs> we need that XP. It's important stuff. Mm -hmm. XP. That's what's gonna get you there. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. trying to level up, man. I'm mm -hmm. like at a level fifty. I'm trying to hit that 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 rep level one thousand. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> mm -hmm. Trying to be reputed in them GTA streets. Yo, I'm, to... <laughs> I'm glad you know I'm talking about GTA. <laughs> mm. Trying to be yeah. fucking infamous out here. Nah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I know I'm going to always try to do everything in my power, you know what I'm saying, to help out where I can, you know, yeah. and try yeah. to not be a, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why, like, I, like in all that storytelling, you know, um, you know, like, you get the, you get that first album done with me, but, like, you don't hear, like, me involved in that story very much after that. You know what I mean? I'm not, like, trying to, like, be like, oh, you know, do this, do that. I'm like, nah, mm -hmm. I gotta let, I gotta let Ryan be young and make his own decisions for himself and you know what i mean like mm -hmm. guide himself where he believes artistically you know what i mean mm -hmm. instead of being like oh do this <laughs> do that you yeah. know what i mean yeah. i just offer tools like oh you know hey this band lab thing or hey this you know this time hey that you know what i'm saying like um, mm -hmm. because I know that you got your own visions and shit, you know, but yeah. we going we gonna also do a couple projects where like, I end up doing the Hitler thing and <laughs> <laughs> Look at Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. like that hits a little too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got stupid. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> dictator thing. I'll do my dictator thing. <laughs> I'll drive one of the projects from uh, from beginning to end. Soup to, soup to nuts? Soup to nuts? Is that what they call it? Soup to nuts? Nah, I don't know. even know what you're oh. talking about. <laughs> it's like a saying. It's like a. It's like I kind of know what he's talking say. about, but not enough to confirm. <laughs> but I've heard this it's shit. The thing white people say in the office world and shit. Facts. Bro, there's yeah. a lot of weird shit white people say in the office world. Facts. Facts. I be I be like semi hearing the talk, trying to memorize it. I'm like, I gotta use that. <laughs> <laughs> White people are using it. I gotta gotta add that to my lexicon. Can't be letting them be out here having anything. <laughs> Re Repatriating these words, but yeah, um, yeah, appreciate I will also you. end up doing that. We'll also end up doing that. Yeah, appreciate yeah. having you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, yeah. thank you for being here. Um, yeah, I don't no, want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say like how much I love you on camera because like I feel like it might be nepotism. Like with other guests, it's like <laughs> You're allowed to with say other it. guests, it's like with other guests, it's like yo, they don't ever hear it from me. But like with you, it's like nah, you you know what time it is. You yeah, you already like, know. You we we like like you know you know you know I'm like I'm invested. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's like. A fact. Like, you know, I'm invested all the way and like yeah. um everything until 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 I'm not here no more that I do is gonna be with like trying to like bear you in mind and like mm -hmm. take take you into account for it and like help you wherever which way I can without you know what I mean? Like uh mm. Back. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's a great conversation. It's yeah. yeah. It's, Definitely, hopefully, you know, one day we could we could do this again. This is this is definitely fun. Yeah, um, well, for sure. Oh, we're gonna run it back again. Yeah, that's there's gonna be things that's gonna you gonna go you gonna go live life, drop some projects, and then next thing you know, it's yeah. like, wait, nah, I gotta come sit down again and you know what I mean? Yeah. And then by then our platform is bigger and we got more fans to introduce you to and yeah. you know. For sure, yeah. man. 
Yo, I appreciate y'all having me though, man. I definitely, definitely appreciate that love and support, man. Nah, nah, sure. thank you. Our pleasure. Like your insight, yeah. the way you see the world, yo, cause like at the end of the day, the show's called Perspectives, right? So how are we supposed mm-hmm. to have perspectives that are full if all we ever do is talk to old people? Mm-hmm. You're just dead right. ass. Mm-hmm. Right? So like hearing from the way you approach the world or how you grow up and just seeing your experiences and how much they differ from my own and other people we've talked to, it's like, nah, that really helps keep me humble and appreciative of like the place we're at in life, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it is... a a big blessing to be able to talk to you and hear your story. Yeah, Word. thank you. It's a blessing to be on this on this meeting with y'all, man. And uh, we, yeah. we also got to thank all the people watching us because yeah, it's real for sure. dope. Um, I appreciate Word. everyone that stuck shout through us the guys. whole conversation. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out all the people watching in the future. Y'all are wonderful too. Don't think we don't forget you. Oh, um, yeah. No, thank you. Word. Thank you. And y'all can follow uh, Rai Gennaro at Rai Gennaro on Instagram, and then he's got a link tree. Oh. So, pff, yeah. we'll set up. That's what I'm saying. Google. Once you Google Rai Gennaro, man, all social medias will pop up. Everything I've accomplished so far and in my journey will pop up. So, mm. yeah. and then, yeah, also yeah. got to give a shout out to End of the Week who's holding us down. We're on their Zoom yes. right now. And, shout uh, out. Yeah, you can make sure to follow them at eodub.com. That's eodub.com. And then you can get all their socials and stuff from there. And on that note, everyone, appreciate you all one more time. It's been a super wonderful conversation. And uh, live long and prosper, everyone. Gang, gang. Yes, sir. Gang, gang. I'm HODF. You already? Liddy, bro. Liddy, bro. <laughs> <laughs>